So we already looked at balancing a redox reaction, so let's take it to the next level. So let's take a look at a relatively simple reaction on paper, iron plus dichromate goes to, this is iron plus two, excuse me, goes to iron three chrome, iron three plus some chromium three. Plus some chromium three. So we do a quick examination. We see that the iron is being oxidized. That probably means that the chromate is being reduced. And so usually a trick to, you know, it's one of the tricks. Once you identify one of them, the other is being reduced. And usually it's a metal. Not always, but usually it's a metal. So let's just double check to be sure. We see that the oxidation number of this chromium, of that chromium, is, is um, plus 6. This one is plus 3. So somehow it's gone from a plus 6 to a plus 3. It has gained three electrons. The only way you could do that is to gain three electrons, so therefore it is a reduction, gain of three electrons. Attempt to balance this, we see that the iron plus two is going to iron plus three plus has lost one electron in the process, and the chromium goes from Cr2O7 minus two into Cr plus 3. And in that process, it has gained a number of electrons. <clears throat> has gained a number of electrons. Now, in this example, it's not as simple. We have to also balance the chromiums. We have two chromiums on this side, two chromiums on this side. And so we see that we go from plus 6 to plus 3 twice for a total of six electrons that need to be taken care of. Now the only way to do this, to balance this out, would be with six of these irons. So the balanced chemical, or the partially balanced, because we're going to see that it's not balanced, is the following. Six Fe plus two plus six electrons plus Cr2O7 minus two goes to two Cr plus threes plus Fe plus three plus six electrons. Now, one of the things we talked about in the last class was that if this reaction really is balanced, all the elements will balance, all the electrons will balance, and all the charges will balance. So if we just if we take a quick cursory glance at the right-hand side of the equation, what we see is that we have a total of uh, 24 positive charges on one side and a total of positive 10 on the other side. So this thing isn't even close to being balanced. Uh, so there's a bunch of things missing. For most redox reactions, particularly those that involve changes in what's bound to the metal in terms of oxygen in particular, these compounds are usually done in aqueous solution in acidic or basic conditions. So let's continue this reaction, redox reactions in acid or base. And usually when you're dealing, again, you're going to be dealing with metal oxides or something along those lines where there's change in the number of covalently bound oxygens. Almost always that's going to be the case. Now, once we balance the reaction, so the, the, the steps for balancing them in acid and base are exactly as the same, same as in the previous example. One, 
balance element that is being undergoing redox right, to balance the electrons. And then we're left with charge that we have to worry about. And it's done the same way in both cases. Once we've added the two half reactions, we balance the, we balance the reaction um, We balance, once we've done that, we balance the reaction the rest of the way by looking at how the oxygens are changed. And the way it usually works under acidic conditions, we, we balance the oxygen by adding water. Right, so we balance any changes in oxygen by adding water. What we see, we have seven oxygens on this side and none on the product. What we see is we have seven oxygen on the reactant side and none on the product side. So we have to balance those out by adding seven water molecules. How can you just add water, Dan? Well, it's in water solution, so the water's there to begin with, so we're really not doing much in that sense. <clears throat> but in this process of adding water, we usually add the water to the wrong side of the equation, the opposite side of the equation, which actually means the right side of the equation, because, you know, that's how chemistry is. What's wrong in some respects is right in others. So. The next thing we do is then we balance the oxygen, the hydrogens, by adding H plus again to the wrong side of the equation, the one that is missing the hydrogen. So if we take a look at, at this, we see that we now have 14 water molecules. There's no extra hydrogen, so we're going to have to add 14 H pluses to the equation. Now, we're not going to need this in this example, but if this re reaction was done under a s basic conditions rather than acidic conditions, neutralize the H pluses by adding OH minus to both sides and canceling as appropriate. We'll get to that in a second. Now that we've done this, we can finish the finalize the balanced chemical reaction, which is the following. 14H plus plus 6 iron plus 2 plus 1 chromate goes to 2 chromium plus 3, plus 6 iron, plus 3, plus 7 water molecules. Okay. Simple. Let's do an example of a balancing a reaction in acidic solution. Hydrogen peroxide reacts with iron plus Two to yield iron plus three plus a water molecule in acidic solution. So let's figure out which is the oxidation. We see that this is the oxidation. That means that the oxygen has to be undergoing a reduction. Now the oxidation number in hydrogen peroxide of each of the oxygens is negative 1. Here it's negative 2. We go from negative 1 to negative 2. We had to have gained one electron at the minimum. But let's balance it out. We see that the iron is going from plus 2 going to iron plus
plus 3 plus 1 electron. And the hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is going to H2O. And the problem is that this is going to require two water molecules to balance this out. Again, balance the element undergoing oxidation. It's going from a negative 1 to a negative 2. And there's a total of two of them. So it's going from each of those is negative 1, each of them going to negative 2. It's requiring a total of two electrons to do that transformation. And those two electrons combine. We then have to, that means we have to balance out the two electrons from the that are required by the hydrogen peroxide with two extra irons, giving us two, two, and two. So when we balance this out, we get H2O2. So we balance the elements undergoing oxidation, we balance the electrons. electrons will cancel. Now the next step again is balance the oxygen. So we balance the oxygens by adding water. <clears throat> and we see that we have two oxygens on each side, therefore we're fine. We don't need to balance any. We don't need to add any more water. Once we're done with that, we add hydrogens. And so in this case we add hydrogens to the side that's deficient. We're missing two hydrogens on the starting material side two H pluses. We add them by adding, we balance the H's by adding H pluses and then we check. Now if we did it right, again the charges will balance, the um, atoms will balance and the electrons will balance. We've already balanced the electrons. Let's take a look at the charges. We see that there's a total of, a total of plus six on one side and plus six on the other. We're golden in that sense. And then we do it, if we actually do the mass balance, we'll find that that the final form is correct. So the balanced chemical reaction with 2H plus plus 2 iron plus 2 plus 1 hydrogen peroxide goes to 2H2O plus 2 Fe plus 3. Now it's not really it's not really all that different for a basic solution. <coughs> for a basic solution, in a basic solution, the process is exactly the same. It's just at the end, you neutralize. adding OH minus to both sides. What do I mean by that? Well, it's best to see it in action. So let's take a look at a manganese plus 2, again reacting with hydrogen peroxide to go to manganese ox plus 4 oxide plus water in basic solution. Again, this is a oxidation number of plus 4. Each of these is negative 1, it's negative 2. So we see that the manganese is being oxidized from manganese plus 2 to plus 4. And the hydrogen peroxide is then being reduced. So once we've identified those two, we can start to balance them out. We see the manganese plus 2 going to manganese oxide plus 4. That means it would have to have lost two electrons. And the hydrogen peroxide going to water. Again, we have to balance the two oxygens in the with the hydrogen peroxide to give us and a total of transfer of two electrons. 
this is nice this balances very easily then we don't actually have to mess with much we can look at it and then decide whether or not it's everything balances the electrons balance very nicely but we see that we still have some charge balance issues that need to be taken care of so balance the oxygens by adding water to the side they're deficient we have four oxygens on one side we need to we have four oxygens on one side we need to balance them out with two other waters again we have um, two oxygens from the hydrogen peroxide that have to balance out the four on the other side so we need two water molecules now to balance out the water so we need two water molecules now to balance out the added hydrogens we now have eight hydrogens on one sorry four six hydrogens on one side and only four on the other so we'll need to add a total of two H pluses to balance them out now all the hydrogens are added now this is what would happen under acidic conditions again total of six hydrogens total of total of six hydrogens now this was this would happen under acidic conditions but the set the question said under basic conditions so in those cases what you have to do under basic conditions is you treat both sides with OH minus in this case two OH minus one for each H plus but what you do to one side you do to the other two OH minus these combine together to form two water molecules leaving us with a total of four water molecules on one side two water molecules on the other now things that are the same on both sides of the equations cancel so we cancel some of these water molecules so just to make it a little more simplistic let's balance it out to h2o plus h2o2 plus Mn plus 2 plus 2OH minus goes to MnO2 plus 2H2O, sorry, 4H2O. So 4H2O. Now, two of these are canceled by the two water molecules on the other side leaving us with a total of two water molecules so overall balanced under basic conditions would be the following H2O2 plus manganese plus 2 plus 2OH minus gives you manganese 4 oxide plus two water molecules then a quick check the positive charges are canceled by the negative charges there's no charge on either side. We check the manganese, we check the oxygen balance. We have four oxygens on one side, we have four oxygens on the other. On the right number of hydrogens, four, four. Done. Now, these steps identifying each of the half reactions, which is undergoing oxidation, which is undergoing reduction, are critical for electrochemistry. Because at the moment, what we're doing is we're just assuming that both reactions are taking place in the same location. But electrochemistry takes advantage of the fact that you can split each of these half reactions. And you don't have to do them in the same location. But you can couple them together nonetheless. And that's where we're going to pick up.